What's going on? I'm Sheila Matthews. And I'm Martin Z. Johnson. And you're watching your favorite internet show, Logged In. All right, so our guest today has been seen on the big screen in the classic movie Hardball and every day on TV hosting MTV's Ridiculousness. And he just released a new music video for his new single, Summer Goodbye, featuring Larry June. Stilo Brim, welcome to the show. Never heard somebody intro me with Hardball, <laughs> so it's gonna be an interesting interview as he is. <laughs> did our research, we did our research. And Hilarious. We're, we're kicking today's show <laughs> off with a segment we like to call Explain This. Okay, so Stilo, we discovered some old photos of you, and you gotta give us some context. Okay. All right, the first one up, you're at the GQ Man of the Year party with Michael B. Jordan and Tyga. Explain this photo, sir. Explain it. I'm just there looking like D-Nice, apparently. <laughs> um, I look high as hell. I think I smoked before I got there, for nice. sure. What kind of materials that I'm wearing? It looks That's very alligator, silly. right? Bro, is that a fedora? <laughs> I can't tell. I don't even remember that shirt, to be real with you. And I always dress myself, and I don't remember that shirt at all. But uh, now we just kicking it. I mean, you know, uh, Mike's a homie, Tiger's a homie, so we bumped each other at the, at the uh, award show, whatever it was, after party, and it was cool. For sure. So you and Michael B. Jordan, y'all are friends, but how did y'all meet? How did that relationship form? Hardball, there you go. There's your reference right there, Hardball. When we were 11, 12 years old, we met on the set of Hardball. Uh, Mike was one of the actors. I was there um, for baseball. I played baseball. I was ranked in the state. So they asked me to come in. And so I came in and was in the movie. And uh, we became best friends from actually doing a movie together. I guess the rest is history. <laughs> Explain this to us, because this is a lot going on in one frame. <laughs> oh, that's uh, little Miles Brown from um, Blackish. He's a homie. I played in the uh, NBA Celebrity All-Star Game. And he's been a homie for years. So he was there joking, trying to rough up with me. And, you know, I got to let him know sometimes. Hey, dog. You know, I'm still from Chicago. I don't have to rough you up. Come on, period. You better rep Chicago today. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to throw it over to picture number three. Here we go with Hardball. Uh -oh. It's a common theme right here. <laughs> this is the premiere. No, it's the premiere of Hardball. And I'll be real with you. I'm going to give you a little inside story right here. It's funny. I have on a brand new Rockaway denim outfit. Don't know why. But they, I, my parents had called in. We never been to a premiere before. We from Chicago. We like, yo, what do we wear? They like, we want y'all casual, cool, with the kids to be able to have fun. I'm the only kid, as you can see, without a Steve Harvey suit. So I missed the memo. I missed the mark. Uh, I still feel stupid to this day because I'm wearing a Jay Z outfit at the time. In my head, I thought I was gonna kill him, and I look so dressed down, like I do not belong there. <laughs> Yeah, Sheila said she thought it was a Jackson 5 when we first saw that photo. That's fair. People used to take me. I'm like little Michael Jackson all the time, so I, I'll take that. But, yeah, this was actually um, out here in my first time ever in L.A. You know, the premiere was it was super dope. It was the Afros. That's what that's what did it. I looked at it. First yeah. glance, I ain't know. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we're going to take it over to our next topic, and we want to get into music with you. So you started dropping music this year, and already you have features from Fab, Aaron Ray, and recently Larry June. So yeah. I don't know if people know, you know how you got started a and r -ing. So talk to yeah. us about that transition from a and r -ing to creating your own music. Um, I used to a and r um, Mostly R&B, I used to work with Trey Songs and Troy Taylor over at Songbook and stuff. And for me, that went on for many years. And then from there, I transitioned from doing that, helping Drama, who's Rob's uh, cousin, put together his pu publishing production company. Rob had come to the studio a couple of times. That's how I ended up doing Ridiculousness. Um, since then, I've done a couple of things. I, I ended up EPing actually Creed 2 soundtrack. Uh, me and Mike reconnected so I could do the music on the Creed 2 soundtrack. But I wanted to dive back into music for years. I just didn't know what was going to be my entry. I used to manage songwriters and producers. So for me, I was like, oh, I've always been behind the scenes, but I have all these networks, all this, this huge network behind the scenes. Part of me felt like I wasn't utilizing that. And then on top of that, I knew I kind of had always toyed with the idea and wanted to be an artist. Uh, just was kind of scared and shame. My mom made me feel like, you don't want to be no rapper. Everybody, everybody, you don't want to be no rapper. So I stayed away from it for the longest. And then uh, as I got out here, and I was like, yo, you put down too much, you put your feet down too much in LA to not really do more with yourself and do the things you want to do. Uh, if nothing else, take a stab at it and, and see what happens. And luckily for me, I have decent relationships and people don't hate me. So it's been easy to kind of get people on records, but uh, I like where it's headed. So Sheila and I are obviously aren't in the music business. So I'm just wondering, how does the song come together? Does the beat come first? Do you write the lyrics? 
take me through the entire process. For me, uh, I've tried to approach the process super, um, I don't say niche, but like me really tapping into artists that I like, people I, I think are cool or fly aesthetically appeasing uh, for what I actually embody or what, you know, goes hand in hand with what I do. So for me, Larry, somebody like Larry June, I'm like, yo, I'm a fan of your work already. I'm cool with David Ali, who's his manager. So I ended up hitting David like, yo, I rock with Larry. He's like, y'all got to connect. Y'all hella similar. Y'all should just link up and see what it is. We linked up and... uh. I already had a, a couple beats in stash. She was actually supposed to be on my project on a record called Proper, uh, Justice, Lee, Justice Lee had produced. Uh, and he ended up, didn't have time to do it. He was so busy. Um, and then came back around, we linked up, kicked it a couple times. And I was like, hey, do I got another beat for you that I think actually could work perfect for us? And he was like, actually, I already used this beat. I'm like, you did, didn't you? He was like, yeah. I was like, you know what? Let's run it back anyway. <laughs> so like, staying on the inspirations, and kind of where you pull your sound from. Like you mentioned, you're from Chicago. And like, for yeah. example, June is from like the Bay. Like it's very different, but similar styles of music, yeah. right? So how do you find like your Chicago roots playing into your collaborations now? And like the type of music that you make being in LA, especially? You know, I've been in LA for so long. Like that's, that's a part of me as well, but I'm definitely uh, core Chicago for sure. Um, for me, it's, it's a lot of soul. Like Chicago, the music itself, even when you dealt with the rappers, it, it's still, their their foundation would always be centered in R and B and soul. So like you know, house music comes from Chicago. So a certain soul that we gonna just always have and rock with. So uh, for me, somebody like Larry June, the Bay, uh, uh, anything about San Fran, anything about Oakland, anything about Detroit. These these little cities all cardiated up. They all like these kind of you know player type mentalities and pimp type mentalities from back in the day. So the music kind of is cohesive. So it just made sense as well. All right, last week we played One's Gotta Go and it was based off of Halloween candies that we didn't like and some people did not agree with our choices. So now we're gonna bring you into the hot water with us. Okay. CeeLo, here are your options. You gotta tell us which is the worst Halloween candy and it's gotta go. Okay. Your options are Milk Duds, Tootsie Rolls, Butterfingers, and Crunch Bars. Ooh, uh, I'm cool with Milk Duds, they can stay. Uh, Tootsie Rolls is just classic. I don't know if I even like necessarily like them, but they cool, straight to the point. Yep. Butterfingers, the marketing behind it with the Simpsons and everything, they tried to push that for years. It did, never got me, never got me. I was never Thank a Butterfinger you. Oh guy. my God. I was always like, ah, snap it to the finger. Oh, this is cool. I like it. I love marketing. I also was like, not that good. Um, so, and then what was the last Crunch Bar? Yeah. They, they got me more with that. I was a huge Shaq fan. Shaq used to do Crunch Bars as a kid. So I was into more of Crunch Bars. Not that good. Looks like kind of a, a, a weird acne face that you're eating. <laughs> uh, so that can get a little up in the air, but I still think Crunch Bars is better than Butterfinger. I can see, Sheila, that you like Butterfinger. Yeah. You you have never had a new flurry with a Butterfinger? Like it's a new level when the machine works. What is even in the Butterfinger exactly? Butter and fingers, because that's what it that's tastes like. That's not even a good yeah. recipe. That's a horrible yeah. recipe. No, Jeffrey Dahmer right. might like it. I don't. Oh Lord, you know, don't do that. Butterfinger is it's it's a wholesome a wholesome snack. It does get stuck in your teeth though, but. Okay. You're bringing the cons while you're trying to pitch me. That's not a good. <laughs> I know I'm not a good salesperson. Don't don't ask me to sell anybody a car. I'm not the person. <laughs> All right. Well, we see you know your Halloween candy. Um, but let's see if you know your Halloween movies. So, first one being, what was the character's name that boxed Jason in Friday the 13th, Jason Takes Manhattan? Oh, I gotta, oh, hey, this is a hey, time now. I <laughs> thought you was asking complete, I gotta know the answer to this? Yeah. Who boxed Jason? Uh, I'm gonna just start a right. name, I don't know. Uh, Evander Holyfield, there you go. What black comedian appeared in two Resident Evil movies as Lloyd Jefferson Wayne. That's I'm guessing name. that's not the black comedian right there. That would be too easy, right? <laughs> black comedian, I've never even watched Resident Evil. Wasn't my type of film. No disrespect to Resident Evil. Um, I'll say Eddie Griffin feels like he might pop up in random horror movies though. That, that's a very fair guess, but it was my guess. But it was a very fair guess. Oh, my guess wasn't a uh, Resident Yeah, I forgot about that one. That was one of the newer ones. Yeah, shout out to Mike, that's my guy though. 
I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna just start giving you some clues. All right. So like, we I like gonna, that. We make this a little like, easier. I, I don't like that. Just passed us. First of all, y'all, I need to get to celebrate Halloween like that. This, no, that was me too. It's okay. That, that was that's Hallelujah what I got night and stuff, y'all. Hello. This wasn't even we was in church right at midnight. Come this on. This next yeah, one should be on. easy. All right. So I'm usually not in the business of taking people's black cards away, but if you don't get this one, I might have to consider it. What interrupted Samuel Jackson's speech in Deep Blue Sea? Shark fam. And we're not gonna fight anymore. <laughs> he got bit up. And he got ate up right there. Of course there I know Samuel Jackson though. Come on. <laughs> All right, look, you're on a roll. So let's see if the roll can continue. What was Snoop Dogg's first horror film? I don't guess Vampires in Brooklyn. I don't even know that's right. Close-ish. It was Urban Menace. What? Fam, what is, what is it? Urban Menace? <laughs> it, yeah. It might what have been that? straight to DVD. I don't know. I never it's seen it. It's a red either. box? Come on. Don't, Snoop don't want y'all even mention this. No, it's like Harbaugh. Intro to me with Harbaugh. <laughs> what was the first horror film to have a black lead actor? Is this like, uh, is this like black exploitation? The Blackula was a real film. I'm gonna go ahead and say Blackula. Before black exploitation. Before? Yeah. yeah. So uh, this is before the 50s and 60s, yeah. Mm. Oh, okay. Man, okay. <laughs> well, look at us. <laughs> look at us. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know who it is though. Uh, before? Have oh, you ever you heard of Night of the Living Dead? Again, y'all gotta look. I watched like four Halloween films. Like, <laughs> guy, maybe Halloween. I wasn't really getting through all of those. But who started this? Dwayne, Dwayne Jones. Jones. Dwayne, that's a black man for sure. Yeah, that's, 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 <laughs> there's no, there's no denying that. Yeah. <laughs> all right, CeeLo, it's your redemption question here. Last question: okay. What rapper appeared as himself in Seed of Chucky? Oh, I just said Chucky too. Shot myself <laughs> in the foot. Uh, <laughs> There's a color involved here. He was a There's, duo. It, it's a duo or only one rapper appeared in? One rapper appeared, but he was in a duo. I'm probably not that good at uh, giving hints because that wasn't a good one. Yeah, your methods aren't good. Yeah. Oh! Okay, so the duo thing is throwing me off even more. Was, he just gave you a right hint, CeeLo. He just gave you a hint. Did you catch it? I met the man. I heard you. My bad. There you go. It was I Red missed man. It, it, it was Red, Red Man, but Red I, man. I tried to throw you something with method. My bad. <laughs> Oh, uh, my bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, I, I got to get up on my Halloween a little more. That's, so I'm leaving with that today. My Halloween game got to get up a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we noticed you're pretty active on Black Twitter. So we compiled a list of common questions that Black Twitter debates about every morning before they brush their teeth. So we're going to ask you a few of them. My team is going to start, and I'm going to finish. So let's go. Number one, is $200 sufficient for a date? $200, like $200 is what people expect on a date, like a first date? Look, look, Steve-O, um, not everybody has a national television show, so $200 no, is a lot I'm to saying some people. No, I'm saying $200 is a lot. Oh, okay, I thought you said it was nothing. You can okay. get a, yeah, man, okay. if I'm in New York, I get a date off of $50. I, like, I'll walk around and do, because you can walk around, you can do cute stuff. It's all about cute stuff. Girls don't care about you just spending bread. You can go do cute stuff, get some ice cream, walk around, look like you care about her for real. You do not care. You just don't have no money. <laughs> so you just like, let's do this cute shit. It's cheaper. Uh, it is cheaper. But what if I want to yes, eat? Yes, what if King. I want to eat? Now I want to drink. Now you want to drink. Because I don't want to drink if you're not drinking. Now we got to drink. Might, we are 100 Why did you eat before you got here? <laughs> I told you we was going to get ice cream. Why, why would you not eat? You wanted me to pregame, put liquor in my stomach, then dairy? That doesn't even sound like a good combination for a date, Stilo. <laughs> $200 seems to be fine. I mean, it depends on what city you in, obviously. Yeah. But $200, you can stretch that out. I mean, I yeah, I be tripping going on dates with my girl and we out to eat. We together, we together. <laughs> and I be out to eat. And sometimes I'm like, $250, it's just us? That's crazy. We didn't need that. That wine, we didn't need that. That was crazy. <laughs> you get it. You get it. Yeah. Uh, so you're driving, you get in the car, you have your mom and your significant other. Who gets to sit in the front seat with you? Um, I'm gonna I'm measure them and see who's taller. <laughs> I'm gonna be like, all right, well, she need more leg room, mama. <laughs> this is what it is. No, uh, I mean, you know, my me and my girl, we thorough like that. She gonna probably tell my mama sit in front anyway. I don't get to see her as much. My girl with me all the time. I get to spend some time with her. She gonna probably be like, mama, bro, you get in the front. For sure. And if not, they gotta box it out. That's their business. They two grown women. Oh, not to box it out. I, I like your style, sir. <laughs> Number <laughs> number three, we were just talking about restaurants. So you go to a restaurant and you order a steak or a hamburger. What temperature do you order your steak or hamburger at? Uh, it just depends on what restaurant I'm at. 
You know what I'm saying? If it's a super white restaurant, <laughs> then I'm gonna be like medium plus. Cause you know, I want them to cook it a little, little bit more. If it's a black restaurant, I'm gonna say medium because they gonna do it medium well anyway. They're not gonna care <laughs> what I'm talking about. <laughs> They'll bring it out to me and be like, there you go, fam, figure it out. I mean, you but, can uh, say rare and they would still bring it out well done. For sure. But I, yeah, I, I'm more of a medium guy. I'm gonna go with medium or medium plus. All right, so now we gotta know. Do you like drums or flats when you're ordering your chicken? I'm flats. I'm straight flats with it. I don't like drums like that. You know what I'm saying? I mean, to each his own. But I've been looking at the, the TikTok or whatever it is with the sorcery. The sorcery they got going on out here with both sides. They pull it. Yeah. And they make, they make a sore sound, a sore sound with it too. They shoo. You be like, what the hell? And people like, they eating flats wrong the whole time. I've not yet tried it. And I have had flats. I just have not believed in myself enough to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, I'm a flats guy for sure. Have you seen that woman eat those flats? She nice with it. Okay. I, yeah, I've yeah. tried it. I, I think it doesn't oh, work. You tried it. Yeah, it didn't work for me, but I think I, I got to fry hard. That's where I went wrong, you know? They practice it? That's wild. Now, I, thought they was, <laughs> <laughs> I thought they was in your freestyle. So now they put in your work is insane. <laughs> All right, Stila. So, how long before you post your love interest on your main feed on Instagram? Like, what's your timeline for that hard launch? Oh, I don't, I don't. No, whenever I feel like I want to post you, I don't know. Like, I'm not really a person that be like, I got to see if this lasts for three months. Like, they got a delete button on Instagram. I can just delete your pictures. Like, it's not like they're there forever if we break up. Uh, I've done it before. So uh, for me, it's like, yeah, it, it just depends on the relationship. Depends on, like, how I'm feeling. Uh, I want to say, I wanna, I'm trying to think how long was it before I posted my girl? Maybe, like, four months? Like, three months? That what seems kind of long. 90 day uh, period. Yeah, that's that's the Steve Harvey timeline. I'm, I'm with it. Yeah, I'm with but no, I'll post my girl another, you know what I'm saying? We get a cute picture. She's so cute. She's so cute. Be my, my ugly ass face that I'd be <laughs> mad about. Like, damn, why you let me stand next to you? That's crazy. <laughs> All right, Sila, this is the one that got the Twitter streets hot. So we got to know what you think. Is Miami overrated as a vacation spot? Uh, Miami's fun. Miami's fun. I don't know. I, I don't go too often. Like it's a little too wild for me. Like I'm I'm a person that like I don't need all that for like like I'm if I'm in Vegas, people like Vegas, I'm like I'm a day and a half, maybe a day, two days. I'm not trying to be here. My soul is leaving. Every every minute I'm here, I'm more experienced. My soul just leave my body. I'm good. I think Miami gives me sort of the same vibe sometimes when I'm there. I'm like, ah right, y'all, we did it, didn't we? We doing this again tonight? I'm gonna go home. So um, Miami is, yeah, it's cool though. It's fun though while you doing it. You know what I'm saying? I like 11, I like all night strip clubs. That sounds cool. They should have them in every state. Yo, I, I don't I disagree, seen. sir. I don't I, disagree. I really feel seen right there. So this is our last question. This is the one that black Twitter debates every day before they brush their teeth. You mm. won't know what question I'm talking about too. Dinner with mm. Jay-Z or 500K? Uh, I've had dinner with Jay Z multiple times. So I'm a, uh, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and say uh, 500k. <laughs> there we have it. That's the official <laughs> answer. <laughs> All right, well, Stilo, it's been so much fun having you join us. Tell people where they can find you on social media and where they can stream your music at. Uh, all the regular stuff, Spotify, Apple, uh, social medias are Stilo Brim, S T E E L O B R I M. You know. And I can't let you go without, I'm looking at your shirt because I just looked up at the screen. What's your shirt say? Oh, it's a million man mark shirt. I'm a huge vintage tea collector, so I just be having on different shirts, you know? Oh, that's so dope. Well, so mine, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, like, nah, my, my parents super uh, crazy pro-black. So, yeah, 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 we, yeah, you know, it was just something that was in our household for sure growing up, like, embodying that. You know, we grew up in, in Chicago, in, in the middle of Chicago, so... I live in an all-black community, so for me, my, my people, it always means a lot to me. For sure. And did you see the Spike Lee film? The Spike Lee film? Get on the bus? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I love Get on the bus, yeah, for sure. My dad made us see every Spike Lee film. I went to see Bamboozled as a kid inside the film. What am I watching this? But yeah, so I, yeah, I'm a big Spike Lee fan. Big, big Spike Lee fan. Huh. Well, that makes two of us who've met Spike Lee before. So, yeah. I didn't say I met Spike Lee. Oh, that makes one of us. That makes one of us. I said, even though I have. I said, even though I have. I didn't say that at that time. <laughs> All right, Martinzi, tell the people where they can find you on social media, too. Uh, on Instagram at Martinzi J and on Twitter at 10Z Johnson. And you can find me on Instagram at toldby.she and on Twitter at toldbyshe. And remember, follow us on all platforms at Anscape. And like the video, subscribe to the channel, and let us know in the comments what we should talk about on the next episode.
Thanks for joining us, Dilo. Bye, everybody. Thank <laughs> you.